Welcome everyone to our YouTube series, uh, Test Prep Made Easy. Uh, so in this particular series, we are going to post regularly uh, questions on our YouTube channel. The questions may pertain to CAD preparation, may be pertaining to GMAT preparation, as well as of various topics which are tested in these particular exams. Uh, for example, quants, LRDI, English, and various areas which are tested. And uh, each day, we will handle certain number of questions and their video solutions. The best approach is to these questions uh, in these videos. So have a happy preparation ahead and uh, enjoy the video. Thank you. Okay, so this is the LR set that we are going to discuss in this video. Hopefully you have already tried it from the thumbnail itself. Uh, if you haven't, you can uh, pause the video at this point. Uh, we recommend you to try it once before you watch the solution. And if you just want to enjoy the solution, you're welcome to do, uh, do the same thing. Um, just go ahead and watch the solution, which will be starting now. All right. I hope that uh, all of you have tried this site and got the answers because uh, this is a pretty straightforward site, uh, selection uh, based, uh, conditionality based selections and all. So uh, we have done these kind of things uh, in a lot of different questions in our classes as well. Um, if you look at this particular set, so there are certain conditions given on the basis of which the selection has to be done, right? That is what the premise is talking about. So this person, the principal has to select students among these, uh, uh, how many are those? Seven people, I believe. Uh, yeah, uh, to represent the school in an upcoming inter-school competition. Uh, whatever, then the additional information are the conditions that we have to do. So whenever you have a conditionality type of thing, so uh, not only on the basis of selection, there are various ideas which are developed on conditionalities. So this if, only if, and all. Uh, it's always good to first represent those visually because every time I don't want to read the statements and figure out uh, for, for, from the statements itself because that would be too much of reading for each and every question. So what, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just collect uh, each of these information out here uh, visually. So just bear with me, you'll understand what I'm doing. So, uh, but, but yes, uh, understanding each and every uh, statement or condition is important. So uh, if you have any problem with understanding any of the statements, do mention in the comments. So first statement, if C is there in the team, then E should not be there, but F should be there. So there are two things here. So if C is present, then E cannot be present. So I typically use this as not, but as I've shown in the classes, I'm not going to do this. Uh, so whenever I, uh, I know that C is there in the team, then E is not there. It automatically also means that if E is there, then C is not there, right? So instead of writing all of this, uh, I'm just going to indicate this by simply C slash E. So now I know that uh, only one of C or E uh, may be selected. Now, uh, this is again something I've uh, indicated or, or explained in our classes as well. So, uh, uh, to differentiate between can be selected and must be selected. So, there might be an information which says uh, one of C or E has to be selected. So, in that case, uh, you know, I'll just put a bracket like this. So, later on, I know that this is a must kind of thing that is happening. So, one of them has to be selected. But right now, as I've not put the bracket on, uh, I know uh, implicitly that, okay, uh, it is possible that neither of C or E is selected. That is acceptable. But yeah, both cannot come together because of the slash sign. Great. So this is one information, one part, uh, one, one, one part of the first information. And the second part says, again, uh, leading with if C is there in the team, then F should be there in the team, right? So what it means is if C is selected, then F, should be selected, right? So F has to be selected. So C implies F, something like that. So you can put an arrow, you can put a implication as well, if you want. Uh, I'll just put an arrow because it's entire thing is uh, conditionalities itself. So uh, this is the first point. Uh, let's focus on the next point now. Uh, only if A is not there in the team, B is there in the team. So this is also similar to uh, what it said in the first part of the first uh, information, right? So only if A is not there, B is there. So uh, if A is there, then B cannot be there, right? Uh, and vice versa. So effectively, 
we can again use this a slash b thing but uh, it is not that any one of them has to be selected so i'll not put that must thing at, at all so this is only uh, this is the only thing that is mentioned in the second information now the third one says if e is there in the team then a is also there in the team so very similar to that c uh, implies f thing so let's write this down so e is there in the team then a is also there so e implies a fourth one says if b is there then d must also be there in the team again very similar to the previous one so b implies uh, d by the way this must is uh, not what i was talking about okay uh, this automatically means that i mean uh, this implication whenever i read this i know in our uh, you know in in when, whenever whenever i'm solving a question i know if i have to put b then i have to put d uh, as soon as i look at this so uh obviously i mean that that is automatic right you don't have to do uh, work anything because this must is there i mean must be there or uh should be there uh, somewhere yeah so should be there i mean it really doesn't make any difference it's the same language uh anyhow the fifth point now only if g is there in the team b is there in the team so this is this is something you have to understand i mean there are many people who get confused between if and only if uh the easier way to handle this is just uh you know change the premise a bit so uh, read it in this way put the only if later on if you want that that might help a little bit so what you can do is you can read it as something like this uh, b is there in the team only if uh, g is there in the team now uh, whenever you're reading it in this way uh, that confusion should be gone because i just played around with the subject and predicate that's all so uh, what i did was uh, now it should be evident from this b will be there in the team only if g is there what does that mean that if g is not there b cannot be there so what it implies is something like this if b is selected then g must already be there right so if b is there in the team so g has to be selected so this is the difference between if and only if so if if you just want to simplify it just change the uh, first part and the second part put the only if in middle uh, and and obviously keep the subject and predicate accordingly i mean keep it uh, as the statement is there don't change the statement by yourself but yeah this is this is what you can do it might help a little bit so uh, this is all the information that we have and there is nothing more to do with these statements that are present so now uh, that we have collected everything visually let's get into the questions and i'll just show you how to solve this with without looking at the statements again okay question number 1 says uh, if the number of students selected into the team is n so we are focusing on the number of students so the number of students selected into the team is n then what is the number of values that n can assume so basically what it's asking for is uh, what can be the team size what could be the size of the team so uh, how many values can the team size take up right uh, what is the number of values that n can assume uh, so we are not focused on what values n can assume but rather than uh, how many values uh, n can assume or what could be the different team sizes how many team sizes can we have so let's just go one after the other uh let's think about if n equal to 1 is possible we can have uh, can we have a team of size 1 for example uh if you look at the conditions out here so if c is selected f has to be selected and uh, if you think of uh, these two information together it will be a little smart to do that so if b is selected and then d and g both has to be selected again if e is selected then a has to be selected right but what about uh suppose i select a if i select a Uh, there is no condition which says that if a is selected somebody else has to be selected right so i can very well select a i could have selected f also in fact so this is a separate team by the way a is a separate team f is a separate team so just selecting f is absolutely fine right so n equal to 1 works right so i can definitely take uh, a team of size 1 because there were no other constraints also uh, if you look into the premise there was nothing about the you know size of the team as such right it just that uh, this principal has to select students from it sometimes in the premise it says it has to have a minimum size of 2 but in this particular premise we don't have that anyhow let's uh, check the next value of n so let us say n is equal to 2 now so just uh, leading from what we tried in the previous one 
uh, we can very well select a and f right uh, this is pre pretty much possible uh, even even something like uh, let's say e and a uh, i can select e but then i have to select a but then i stop there i don't select anybody else um, it's acceptable right according to the given information so n is equal to 2 should also be uh, very much acceptable uh, n equal to 3 again let's start with e and a or or this one let's say b d g i i can very well select b d and g right i can select b and then i select uh, i have to select d and g but i do that because uh, team of size 3 is what we require so uh, team of size 3 is also very much possible uh, n is equal to 4 let's say now b d g example i took let's start with that uh, let's take b d g and then uh, one of a or f uh, let's say i select a for example if i no i cannot select a because i have selected b that violates this constraint but yeah i can select f right because e is uh, c is not selected as of now uh, mm, sorry uh, yeah uh, ha huh, but f f doesn't have a problem any which way right and c and e has a problem but f doesn't have a problem so i can select f very well so yeah team of size 4 is also possible so n is equal to 4 is possible and uh, let's say uh, n equal to 5 now this is uh, something you have to be a little smart here so let's start with bdg first of all because that includes three people right so i'm starting with that of course if i'm selecting bdg then i cannot uh, select a right uh, that has to be taken into account uh, but now i can select both c as well as f isn't it i can select uh, c and f and that should not have any problem out here right uh so yeah uh, i i can select both c and f e is not selected so i can definitely do that uh yeah so n equal to 5 is possible so yeah this is also fine uh this is the team that i'm uh, you know focusing at uh now n equal to 6 i can straight away ignore so uh, this is why i was referring to the total number of people in between uh so we have seven member right uh we have a total of seven members and uh, that the entire context of this particular set is based on um out of this if you look at this condition and this condition so both of c and e can never be selected as well as both of a and b can never be selected right so indirectly what it implies is uh, one of c and e has to be missed out and one of a and b has to be missed out so two people we are always missing right whatever combination we try to make so there is no way that the number or the team size can exceed 5 and uh, uh, i mean because because there are total of seven members and we are missing out two people for sure right at least two people has to be missed out uh, even the example that we took up previously if you remember b d g uh, then i took c and f right so you can see e and uh, a are missed out because b is selected a cannot be selected uh, e is selected so um sorry c uh, c is selected so e cannot be selected so yeah so team can be maximum of size 5 so obviously these are the possible values of n and we are looking for how many values of n are possible so there are five values right 1 to 5 um i'm hoping that uh, there is no team of size 0 because uh, yeah so this principle will make a selection right uh, has to select students among this thing right it does say has to select in the initial premise uh, any which way so the tick mark remained but anyhow yeah that will be the answer option d uh, five possible sizes so let's move to the next one let me take this off okay second question is saying if a team of maximum size so from the previous question we know that the maximum team size is uh, n equal to 5 right so this is the maximum team size that we can have is selected for the inter school competition then who among the following cannot be present in the team okay this is interesting so we started off with that uh, b d g uh cf combination right so let's start with that only now if you look at this uh so we have to focus on uh, these three possibilities right e a b i don't have to work too much into it i just need to focus on the options so there are e a b so which of the following cannot be present in the team so b is ruled out because b is already there in this combination uh let's try to include a now don't get confused see uh, if b is selected then d and g has to be selected but it's not the other way around right so if d and g are selected it's not mandatory that you have to select b see why i'm focusing on that is uh here we have an option which is a so uh, we already know that a and b can never be selected simultaneously so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to replace b with a and i'm going to write this exact same team uh so 
this is also acceptable. It doesn't break any of the constraints, right? So I, I have A, D, G, and I have C and F. So no, no issues as such, right? So even, even A is uh, ruled out because you're looking for which cannot be present. A can be present, right? Similarly, the last option that we have is E. Uh, apart from that, we have none of the above. So uh, if I have to select E, again, looking at this condition, if I select E, C cannot be selected. So let me again rule out C and uh, replace with E. Let's do this. I mean, I could have placed a B here as well. If this doesn't work out, I'll maybe try the B thing. But uh, I'm not finding any issue with any of the conditions, right? So C and E both are not selected. A and B both are not selected. If C is selected, then F is selected. If F is selected, C may or may not be selected, right? So uh, this condition is also not violated, uh, as well as these conditions are also not violated, right? Uh, by the way, if E is selected, then A has to be selected. This was its condition, uh, which is also taken care of. I mean, A is already there. So I, yeah, so the thing I was pondering on, so if I, if I tried this combination, uh, this will not be feasible because if A is uh, e selected, A has to be selected. So yeah, so I was a bit lucky here because I changed, I kept the A constant. Uh, if you would have kept the B constant, then you should also try uh, keeping this A constant and try one more combination. But yeah, E is also acceptable, right? E can be present in the team. So each of these options are ruled out. So the answer has to be none of the above. So go, go along with the options in this case. It's a pretty straightforward question. Uh, let's look into the next one quickly because it says if C, I, I'm seeing that it's again a five member team. So uh, we already have worked out something here. So let's look at this. If C is selected in a five member team, who among the following need not necessarily be selected into the team? So look at the combination. See, first of all, uh, if you think about that, the swapping between A and B and the swapping between E and A. So if uh, let's let's do it in this way. So this spot is taken by A or B. Then you have D and G. Uh, this spot is taken by C or E, and uh, this is F. So all we are doing is a combination on these things, right? Uh, because uh, it's a five member team. So one of these two have to be there and one of these two have to be there, right? Otherwise you cannot form a five member team. So uh, effectively all the combinations so the BDG CF. So we have put a B here and C here. Uh, this combination is accounted for. Uh, we have put an A here and a C here. Uh, this combination is also accounted for here. We have taken an A here and an E here. So this is also accounted for. And if you remember the previous question analysis, which I was discussing. So if I put a B and an E, uh, this is not acceptable, right? Uh, the above one is acceptable, but this one is not acceptable because it violates this condition. If E is selected, uh, where is A? So uh, that, that, that is not acceptable. So this is not acceptable. So effectively what we know is we have already taken all the combinations of five member team, um, you know, as, man, as many are feasible. So out of that, it is saying that if C is selected. So if C is selected, it's talking about one of these two things, right? So one of these two combinations has the C in it. So we are looking for which of the following need not necessarily be selected. So if you look at both of these, See, D, G, and F are al always there, isn't it? So D, G, F has to be selected, which need not necessarily be selected is B. So you may have A, you may have B, but D, G, F has to be selected. So answer to question number three should be option A. Uh, fourth one says, if a team of two students uh, is to be selected, who among the following cannot be in the team? So this is a brilliant question, I believe. Uh, I can straight away rule out this B because uh, of this condition. I mean, if B is selected, D and G have to be selected, right? So this is pretty straightforward. We are looking for which of the following cannot be in the team. So uh, if B condition you check, because you're looking for two students and you remember this, I hope by now, that if B is selected, then D and G have to be selected. So it has to be a minimum three, three member team. So B cannot be in the team, right? So pretty straightforward. Um, as I said, I mean, uh, if, if, if this doesn't hit you directly, then you can try it out. I mean, you can try with G, you can try with D. Then when you come to B, you will get the answer. Uh, but yeah, this should this should ideally uh, hit you straight away. So I, uh, as, I, as I was mentioning earlier, so this is a pretty easy version of a selection type. Uh, typically, you will not have uh, a, a, a set like this directly in CAT. You may, you may have it uh, as a sitter or something. 
uh, one one or two easy sets are always there in every year every slot that is uh, but yeah you you will find sets like this in many other exams as well uh, so you, you may find it in in mat or snap or ift uh, even maybe in zat uh, not maybe in zat because traditional lrs uh, do not appear in zat uh, anymore but yeah uh, there are other exams in which you might uh, you know get a set like this so uh, hopefully this visual thing did help you a lot uh to understand uh, it helps us because uh just for one point that if i did not do this for each and every question i had to go back to the statement and read it properly uh so that i don't make a mistake but if you just convert it visually it becomes a little easy uh, you don't have to refer back to the statement you can look at those visual uh, data collected and uh, relationship or selections or whatever conditions and then you can go ahead and you know solve the questions as per required so that's it for this particular uh, solution this entire set uh, hopefully everything was understood thank you hopefully you liked uh, the solutions we provided for these questions and uh, if you did like it uh, do not forget to like the video and share subscribe and comment do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon uh, in that case you will get notification as soon as we upload a new video and if you want to check a bouquet of courses that we provide so we have a huge variant of courses uh, from customizability to full preparation you can check our website www.mathoretry.com i'll leave the uh, link in the description below and uh, have a enjoyable preparation ahead welcome to the mathoretry family and have a good exam ahead